Hi everyone, today my topic of discussion is base of the skull. It is not only important for the uh, examination but it is also important clinically for the neurosurgeon as well as for the uh, neuromedicine people. Now you see this is whole of the skull. This is the skull's cap or the calvaria. You see I put the calvaria on and it forms by the flat bones you see the frontal in front and two parietal behind now you see this is the base of the skull you notice this base of the skull it arranged in three staircase this is the from behind forwards the, the deepest one is known as the posterior cranial fossa then you one step up you will get another deep region which is known as the middle cranial fossa and most superficial one this is known as the anterior cranial fossa. So it is divided into three fossae and it is related to number of nerves and some blood vessels for the location of the disease and you will see so the important thing you will see in the midline you will see a bony prominence and this prominence is known as crista galli. Now is, this is the crista galli. It is the part of a bone that is known as the spongy bone. You see this is the spongy bone. This is known as the ethmoid bone. It lies in the middle on the within the nasal cavity. So this crista galli, it gives attachment to a fold of uh, dura mater that is known as the uh, falx cerebri. Now on either side of this, you will see some small foramina here. And through this foramina passes 16 to 20 olfactory nerves. You will see the nerves they are coming from this nose region and from here they comes out and they forms a band and this is known as the olfactory bulb through which we can perceive the different types of smell. Now this the anterior cranial fossa it is limited in front by the frontal bone you will see this is the frontal bone this is the orbital part this is the roof of the orbital part laterally also limited by the frontal bone and behind it is actually limited by a bone which is butterfly in shape and this is known as the lesser wing of the sphenoid. Now within this anterior cranial fossa this is you see the olfactory uh, rootlets of nerve the olfactory bulb and then you will get a big foramen and if I pass this vat through this foramen it will go to the orbital cavity will see it will go to the orbital cavity so this is known as the optic nerve so the two optic nerve from the both side you will see it comes together and form here the optic chiasma. You will see this is the optic nerve of the other eye. So this is one eye and this is the other eye. So you can see this optic nerve. This is also optic nerve. You will see. So these two optic nerve here it forms a cross and that is known as the optic chiasma which is located in the anterior cranial fossa. Now this anterior cranial fossa if there is sudden break that is the break is very much forcefully then a person have one has to tear this scribri from plate and through this the CSF that comes out through the nose and that is known as the CSF rhinodia. So immediate operation is required for that. Next thing, 
then in the midline we will get the tuberculum celli and that is guarded by this pointed portion which is known as the anterior clinoid process. Behind the anterior clinoid process there is a depression and this depression is known as hypofacial fossa or the pituitary fossa. Here the pituitary gland is situated and it controls whole of our body by the endocrine secretion and it is known as the bandmaster of the endocrine orchestra. So such a small thing control whole of our body. Now you will see behind that there is quadrilateral plate of bone. This quadrilateral plate of bone is known as the dorsum celli and the pointed upper part of the dorsum celli is known as the posterior clinoid process. Behind that there is a slope and this slope is known as the clivus. Now this middle part uh, forms the middle cranial fossa and the lateral extension of the middle cranial fossa you will see this is anteriorly it is bounded by the greater wing of the sphenoid and posteriorly you see it is bounded this thick bone which is known as the petrous temporal bone and here our all the ear that means the external ear middle ear and internal ear is situated within this dense part of the bone and we can hear through this um, mechanism. Next you will see in the middle cranial fossa there are three important foramen. What is this three important foramen? The foramen that lies in front that means this is known as the foramen rotundum. You see this is the foramen rotundum. This is the foramen rotundum and after that this foramen it comes out here through this region which is known as the pterygo palatine fossa. Next foramen is big oval like and this big oval like foramen is known as the foramen ovale. So if I pass a uh, where through this you will see this where comes to the region and that region is known as the infratemporal fossa. So the nerve passes through this foramen oval is the mandibular division of the trigeminal nerve. So trigeminal nerve is a huge nerve and it comes from a ganglion situated over the apex of the petrous part of the temporal bone. From this ganglion, the three division, the maxillary division, it passes through the foramen rotundum. The mandibular division passes through the uh, foramen ovale and there is a small foramen which is known as the foramen spinosum through which the middle meningeal artery not only this foramen at the junction of the anterior cranial fossa and the middle cranial fossa there is a oblong foramen that also passes into the eye and this for oblong fissure is known as the superior orbital fissure through which you see the all the structure that means the nerve blood vessels passes from the the middle cranial fossa it lodges the temporal lobe of the brain and here we can perceive our all types of uh, musics and are all types of sound in the temporal lobe of brain and it is limited behind by this border that is known as the superior border of the petrous part of the temporal bone. Next come to the posterior cranial fossa which is a huge one and you will see in the posterior cranial fossa first thing you will notice here there is a foramen on both sides and this is our internal acoustic meters through which the vestibulocochlear nerve 
that means that produces our balance and the auditory nerve that means which we can perceive the sound it passes through this foramen into the ear and you will see here there is an elevation uh, in behind this internal auditory meatus next thing you will notice that this is known as the tuberculum jugulari of occipital bone and below that there is a foramen which is known as the anterior condylar canal or hypoglossal canal through this canal the 12th cranial nerve which goes to supply the muscles of the tongue it um, passes through it next you will see there is a big foramen the you can visualize on the inferior aspect this foramen this known as the jugular foramen this jugular foramen there is 9 10th 11th cranial nerve and also the inferior petrosal sinus passes through it and here there is the another sinus that is the fold of duramater containing the venous blood that is known as the sigmoid sinus you see i have done here the sigmoid sinus it passes through this foramen and comes out in the neck as an internal jugular vein next thing you should the big foramen you will see and this big foramen is known as the foramen magnum so this foramen magnum from here the lower part of the medulla passes and also the vertebral artery you see the vertebral artery passes through this canal and it passes ultimately through this foramen magnum so this is in short about the base of the skull thank you everyone for watching this uh, topic and please give me comment